We're joined now by the comedian and impressionist uh, Rory Bremner and also by the former cricket umpire Dickie Bird, a close friend of uh, Sir Michael Parkinson. And Dickie, thank you very much uh, for coming on. We'll start with you. And you knew him a long time. I'm very sorry for your loss. You were very close, I know. And you spoke to him in the last few days, I gather. Yes, I... Uh... First of all, I, when I heard the news this morning, uh, I was completely stunned and shocked and uh, I shed a few tears because I've known Sir Michael since he was 14, which we were 14 year old kids in Barnsley here, the son of coal miners. Because uh, you know, Barnsley was a coal mining town in those days. And uh, I was completely shocked because I only spoke to him yesterday. We had a long chat yesterday. I know he hasn't been well. He hasn't been well at all. And uh, his voice yesterday, it, it didn't sound as if it was strong. It, it was a weak voice I heard. And uh, I knew then that there was something wrong with him. We, 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 uh, we cracked a few jokes together. We, we had a few tears in our eyes and uh, we said goodbye, goodbye to each other at the end of the phone call as if we had this feeling that we wouldn't see each other. <laughs> Excuse me. Can you take, I had this you feeling we wouldn't see each other again. And, uh, and uh, you know, we said goodbye and that was it. And uh, as, I've, as I've known Michael for, what, 74 years now, and uh, he's been my close friend, not only my close friend, but my very, very special friend. And uh, it was so, t so sad when I heard the news this morning and uh, I, I slumped in my chair and, and I, I shed a few tears. Yeah, well, as I say, I'm so sorry for you, Dickie. Um, but you did so much yeah. together. You were sons of coal miners. You, you both loved cricket, of course, played for Barnsley Cricket Club. Um, and you, I, I think you got your honorary yeah. doctorates together as well. I think we've got a picture that shows um, your honorary doctorates together when at Huddersfield University, the, the Barnsley campus, I think. Uh, you did so much together. Just describe yeah. your friendship. Well, you're right what you say. We got honorary doctorate degrees at uh, Sheffield and Allen University, and then we got the, them honorary doctorates at Huddersfield University. And uh, it was a very special day for both of us. And uh, as you just said, I've known him for 74 years now, might be more. He was at school at Barnsley Grammar School in Barnsley, and I was at a secondary modern school called Rayleigh. And we, I've known him ever since, and uh, it was a great loss. If it, I, we were very close, we, we phoned each other regularly. He, he, if I had any problems or I was worrying over something, I used to ring, ring him. And he said, any time you've got anything wrong with you, Dickie, you ring me. And we kept ringing each other uh, from time to time. And uh, he, come, he came for me when it was my 90th birthday. I was 90 on April the 19th. And he came specially all the way from Bray just to say a few words at the function uh, for, 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 for me. And uh, when he walked through the doors, I was so grateful to see him. He didn't look well. And he said then in his speech, he said, if I would have walked it, I would have walked it from Bray to Leeds just to see Dickie and just to pay this high compliment to him on his 90th birthday. A man what would do that is a very... <laughs> a very, very, very special friend. Yeah, very is. special friend. Yeah. Well, Dickie, listen, let's just have a... Stay there. We'll have a quick word with Rory Bremner yeah. now, who was on the Parkinson show and also knew... Um, Michael very well and Rory, uh, you know, um, very sad news.
It is, and I'm, I'm I was smiling from there about what a wonderful friendship that is that Dickie has spoken of over the years. And obviously, you know, you think of the three of them, Dickie and Michael Parkinson and Jeffrey Boycott as youngsters at Barnsley Cricket Club. And that's that's where Parky went right back to Yorkshire. He was rooted there. He was so he was genuine and authentic. He came from there. He then went into, into journalism in Manchester, the Guardian. He was a brilliant journalist, and the combination of his his background, his authenticity, his, his Yorkshire grit, his journalism and his sense of humour that set him in good stead for being the greatest interviewer there's been and we talk about the chat show he, he used to call it a talk show and I think the difference between chat and talk is like the difference between celebrity and fame uh, and you look at those shows that he did in the 70s I mean the people he had Charlton Heston Sean Connery Michael Caine um, Kenneth Williams Bob Hope, Dirk Bogard, all these people. And he brought these people into our into our homes, into our living rooms. And he did it. He made it effortless, but it wasn't effortless at all. It was a lot of work on his part. It was the instincts of a journalist, um, the warmth and wit um, of, of a, an intelligent and warm uh, and very funny human being. He was a, he was a lovely man. And he, uh, Rory, he just seemed to put his guests at ease, didn't he? He did. He knew that was his thing. I mean, they were the stone. They were the they were the jewel, really. And he he was he was the ring that set them off to to shine. And he took that very seriously, that both in his research and in the way he phrased his questions. Uh, and when we came on, the comedians, if you think about it, actually a lot of the people he came that he he interviewed were great storytellers themselves: uh, Peter Ustinov, Peter Sellers, uh, David Niven, Kenneth Williams, those sort of people. And for those, he would have prepared those, and he would have worked through in the dressing room beforehand. Um, I don't think with the the sort of main interviewees as it were um he would have done that but he certainly for us comedians he sat and he went through the bits because we were there we were there as a turn and he made sure that we were comfortable we knew what we were doing and he took that time and he took that time with us but with with the with the big stars he was prepared and he adapted if they took him off in a different direction he went off in that direction i think he was a fan he was a fan he loved cricket he loved life he loved jazz uh, he loved uh, sport. He, um, George yeah. Best, of course, was a great friend of his. And um, one of the great romantics, he loved his Hollywood movies. He always talked about when he met Mary Parkinson and um, he said, you know, he said, he said, we'll always, we, he said, we'll always have Scarborough. We'll always have Scarborough, which, of course, you know, taking that from the, from, from Casablanca. And um, he was yeah. just, he was a wonderful man. And he and Dickie, it's just, Dickie's paid a wonderful tribute to him because yeah. you can, you can see the warmth through a lifelong friendship. Dickie, Dickie, I mean, it is a remarkable friendship, Dickie. Um, Rory's absolutely right. Um, and even when he became famous, Dickie, did he keep his feet on the ground? We were at Barnsley. When we played at Barnsley, we all been in for Barnsley, Mike and myself, and we had Boycott played in the same side. Michael Parkinson was a good cricketer. He kept Boycott out of the team. At Barnsley. Did he really? And Boycott wasn't happy. Yeah. He, he, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't repeat what Boycott said. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, Parky kept him out of the side. He was a good cricketer. <laughs> but, but um, Dickie, but he when he good... became famous, he, he, you know, and he became a massive star, um, but he kept talking to you regularly, you would have your chats, and he kept his feet on the ground, did he? He did that. He, he, he kept his feet on the ground. He, he was still, still the same lad as I knew at 14 year old when I first met him. And uh, as you said earlier, as Rory has just said, he, he was, he, he's the best uh, TV ch chat show host that there's been. There'll never be another Parkinson. There'll never be one as good as Parkinson. He was the best. He, and he'll be a legend. He's a legend. You talk about Muhammad Ali, you talk about Garfield Sobers, the greatest cricketer that I ever saw. He, I rank him with them as, as a legend, a great legend. And he, I, I will miss him, I'll tell you this, I will miss him. <laughs> Yesterday morning, we, when, when we spoke together, <laughs> we said goodbye as if we knew we'd never see each other again. Oh. Yeah, well, oh listen, Dickie, my heart breaks he for you. He was a great man. Yeah, and uh, certainly a great interviewer a great and, man. and clearly a great friend to you. Um, Rory, um, yeah. just finally from you, I mean, how will you remember Michael Parkinson? 
I'll just remember that that twinkle in his eye. He he was an intelligent uh, man. He wrote brilliantly. Um, do go and buy his books, people, because you can hear his voice coming through that. And um, he was that wonderful mixture of uh, a, a real, authentic, genuine um, man with intelligence, warmth, a sense of humour, and always a twinkle in his eye. And, you know, you think of Dickie there and that wonderful friendship. And it was Mary. They were married for uh, nigh on 60 years, I think, and a wonderful partnership. Um, that was he brought all these stars that we're seeing on the screen look at that with Miss Piggy um, just brilliant and you know John Wayne and all these characters and all these people he got on he he brought them into our into our homes uh, and he was on their level and they respected him and they loved him and so did, so did I well I mean Dickie oh. Roy is absolutely right. That is a, a very special relationship you have with Michael Parkinson, a great friendship to treasure. And I just wonder, finally, how you will remember him, Dickie. I will remember him for his friendship and that smile he had. He said to me one day, he said, there's one man that I wanted on my show and I couldn't get him. My wife Mary tried, I tried, there was a, a, a great film star. I couldn't get him on. Do you know who it was? No. He never had him on his show. He couldn't get him on. He wouldn't come on the show. I'm trying to think now. Clint come Eastwood. On. Sorry, say again. Clint, Clint Eastwood. Right. Clint Eastwood. Right. Why wouldn't he I come you on? Were gonna say... <laughs> Why wouldn't he come on, Dickie? Pardon? Why wouldn't Clint Eastwood come on? Do you know? No, I don't know. I, I, I never knew. Mary said to me, I've tried, I've tried my best to get Clint Eastwood <laughs> on the show. And Michael's tried his best. We've tried. And they couldn't get him. But they tell me he's a very, very shy man, Clint Eastwood. Is he? And well... that may be the reason. Well, look, we don't want to end this by talking about Clint Eastwood, but he didn't know what he was missing if he didn't do a chat show with Michael Parkinson. But we don't want to end it with Clint Eastwood. We want to end it with Michael Parkinson. So, Dickie, just the last few words about That's your right. great friend. Just the last few words. Right, the last few words. I'll, I'll remember him as long as I live, as long as God gives me strength. <laughs> I'll, remember, I'll remember him by the, the smile. The smile, and I'll remember him the last conversation we had uh, the, the morning before, yesterday morning, that wonderful conversation when we, we shed a few tears. We shed a few tears, and he said to me, Dickie, we, we've had a great life, and our fathers, both fathers, coal miners, would have been very, very proud of us both. And I want, want to only think about him, those words, Remember him by those words. Remember him by those words. Yeah, well, uh, they would be very, very proud. Dickie, thank you very much for uh, coming on the programme. Appreciate you coming on this evening. Um, Pleasure. Uh, must be very difficult for you. And Rory, uh, thank you too. Uh, thank you both for coming on to remember Michael Parkinson. Thank you.